Hi there, RC Girl here. Today we're adding every single Samix metal upgrade onto my STX-10 III. There's a lot of controversy over whether you should be adding weight to your RC crawler. I think if you add it strategically in the right places, keeping that weight down low, it can really help with performance. I wanna show you guys all the Samix option parts. Today we're gonna to do a little work on the STX-10 III. Also have to clean it up after Axial Fest, got it a little dirty. Let's take it away. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome. Here you're gonna find RC reviews, tips and tricks, run videos, flight videos, and other things related to RC. So if you guys wanna see more, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also check out my Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon, where I do a lot of behind the scenes stuff, so make sure you don't miss it. So here's my SCX-10 III. I did a whole build video on this. I'll link that up here. Um, but I just got back from Axial Fest. You can see my tech inspection stickers there. It's a little bit dusty, so we're gonna have to do some cleanup. Huge thank you to Samix for sending out all these option parts for the SCX-10 III. Would I recommend installing every single one of these on your rig? Probably not. That is a lot of weight to add to your rig. I think there's a point where you add too much and that's gonna actually make it harder to climb over stuff. So today we're gonna install every single one of these, but at the end I'm gonna talk about which ones I'd recommend. If you're picking out a couple for your rig, which ones that I would go with. So stay tuned to the end. We're also gonna weigh this before and after. It's already a pretty heavy rig. All right, you can see here that is 7.13 pounds, 3.235 kilograms. First, let's take off the tires, get everything all cleaned up, see which parts we wanna install first. Let's take it away. All right, so we got our tires off. I actually haven't worked on this since I built it. Um, and it looks like there's a little grease leakage coming out of the portal so we can clean that up. So our first order of business is gonna be installing portal weights. These are kind of cool. So they're gonna replace the plastic housing here on both the front and the rear. And so you can see that the bearings are gonna slot into there and they just basically replace the little housing and they're neat because they have a faux rotor and brake caliper so they're going to add some scale details comes with all the hardware you need so we're going to have metal on metal we're going to make sure to thread lock these these are also included as well these little hex adapters so these actually protrude out a couple more millimeters than the stock ones i don't know if you can see that so we're going to have a little bit more wheel offset, which I actually kind of like. This is going to be eight millimeters of offset. I believe these are five. Let's take it away. They're going to add 132 grams to both the front and the rear. All right, so we're going to save all these gears and replace basically just this outer plastic part. So let's get these bearings out and put them in the new part. All right, there we have one side installed. The tolerances feel really nice, feels nice and tight. Doesn't look like there's a seam or anything, so that's nice. Hopefully it's sealed here. Yeah, so far so good. Let's do the other side. All right, so we're done with the rears. Now we're gonna do the fronts. So the front's gonna be a little bit different actually because we're actually replacing this knuckle here as well as the outer housing. Samix makes metal steering knuckles, so we're gonna add these as well as the portal weights. Let's take it away. That is about almost half a pound. 251 grams minus what we're taking off. So these probably don't weigh too much, but basically, that is the weight that we're adding onto the rig. All 
I'm gonna have to take all these bearings out, swap them over to this metal piece. I'm actually very impressed with the tolerances. Everything fit together super nicely. Next, we're gonna install the front shock towers, the right and the left. So these are gonna give us quite a few more mounting positions for our shocks, a little more tunability there. These are actually made of aluminum, so they're nice and light. You actually don't wanna be adding too much weight to the top of your rig. It's gonna make it a little top heavy on the trails. They look freaking sick. All right, making good progress. Next we have our diff covers. So it says that these are 47 or 52. It looks like there's this little attachment here. So I guess I'll have to figure that out, but let's install this. So there's this little inset. This is the five gram inset. So you can choose to install it here. Kind of interesting. I don't know why five grams would make a difference, but got some options there. So actually, as I was trying to screw this in, the screw here stripped out. Across any of the stuff, this is the first screw that's ever stripped out. So I think we're just gonna leave this off for now. One thing I wanted to point out with the diff is that I noticed with full steer, you're getting complete clearance with the diff because it's flat. It looks kind of cool actually. Kind of neat. So you can go full steer and you're still gonna have some space between your link and your diff box. So you get full range of motion of your front steering. So that's super nice. One thing I forgot to do is they provided these screw on weights for the portal boxes. You can actually screw these in to the interior part of the portal box. So there's a set for the front and the rear. I actually might add a little bit more weight to the front so the front end can stay down. Um, that's what I did for my TRX4. Okay, so next we have these little shock cap ends. These are actually gonna replace these little ends here that the springs attach to. These are OT6 Racing Dual Spring Voodoo shocks. These are gonna replace this little, I think this is a little metal piece, aluminum piece. Oh, these are a little bit heavier. They add a little bit of bling. We're gonna have to take off the little rod end here to be able to fit that on and then replace it. I actually have one of my favorite new newish tools. These are shock pliers. Really great for getting the little ball ends out. Also for gripping the shock shaft without scratching them. So let's take it away. Another thing Samix makes is these ball ends here. So I'm gonna replace these silver ones with the gold ones. And while we're here, we're gonna add a little shock oil. These seem to be kind of empty. There's a little bit left in there, but while these are off, let's fill them up and install these back on the rig. For the next piece, we're gonna install the high clearance links. For this one, we're actually gonna put the tires back on to show you guys the stance of the vehicle with the stock links, and then we're gonna install the high clearance links. So one thing I did notice, the threaded part of the end of the axle doesn't poke out as much, so you can't actually use your hubcaps because these require the end of the screw to screw into. So not a big deal, but uh, just wanted to note that. All right, so after mapping everything out, I'm actually only gonna install four of the links. This kit already came with metal links and for all of the straight ones, we're gonna save ourselves some time because installing links is actually kind of a pain in the butt. You have to get them the right length and everything. We're gonna keep all of our straight links, but what I'm gonna swap out is the curved lower links. So the rear lowers and the front lowers. This will change how the rig sits just a tad. So basically we're gonna be swapping out these four links here. So let's take it away. Okay. 
Winks are done. 144. All right, so we have all our lower links installed. So you can see there's a bend here. Okay, now that we have the high clearance links installed, let's measure to the rock sliders again. 91.73. I think that's about the same as we got last time, but we have a little bit more clearance here. All right, that is it for the install. I also ended up not adding the front bumper here. I have a servo winch attachment that wouldn't mount onto this. This is from Knight Customs, allows you to run a servo winch up here. So I'm just gonna go without this. But basically here's all the parts that we took off the rig. 190 grams taken off. All right, time for the final weigh-in. Oh, heavy. 3.662 kilograms, 8.08 .08 pounds. That's with tires, chassis, battery. Let's add the body and see what our final weight is. Whoa, 9.24 pounds. 4.19 kilograms. Hopefully that gives you a sense of all the really cool upgrades that Samix makes for your RC, including the SCX-10.3 and a lot of different other models out there. I think everything turned out super nice. I really like these portal weights. I don't know if you need to necessarily go with the additional portal add-on on the inside, but I really do like the exterior and these metal knuckles. Also really like the metal diff covers. You get full steering clearance, full use of your sting up there. The shotgun caps add a little bit of bling. That is totally up to you. How much money you wanna spend on your rig. Not a necessity, but I think it looks really cool. If you want a couple more mounting positions for your shocks, these will be a nice upgrade as well. The aluminum shock towers for the fronts and the rears. If you want a little more wheel offset, you can go with these eight millimeter hex adapters. There's not enough of the threaded part sticking out, so you can't use the hubcaps anymore. The high clearance links are also pretty cool. I haven't had those on any of my rigs. I don't think that they sell these separately. I think they sell these as part of a kit. If you don't have metal links on your rig, this would be a nice upgrade, the full set. Otherwise, I only used a couple of them from the set, but all in all, super happy with the quality. Nice tolerances. I think this is gonna be a nice upgrade. So check out the description box below. I'll put links to everything down there if you wanna check them out. A Couple things I wanted to mention if you're adding weight to your rig to be aware of. Adding more weight is going to put some more stress on your gears and your portal boxes, also in your transmission, so keep an eye out for that. Adding more weight is also gonna put some more stress on your steering servo, so make sure you're running a high torque servo, something that can handle the added weight. I'm running a Power Hobby 729 MBL steering servo, which is plenty of torque for the weight that I added but something to be aware of. So huge thank you to Samix for sending out all the parts to try out on my channel. Also huge thank you as always to my patrons on Patreon. Really appreciate your support. So thank you so much to all my patrons. Okay, I think that's it. As always, make sure to like and subscribe or see you later.